Hi, um, my name is Tony and I'm a mechatronic engineering student. You can find more about me on my website, mechatronic.com, where we post all of my projects. In this video, I will show you my process of building a self balancing robot. But first, let's take a look at some amazing shots of the robot when it has been finished and working properly. Alright, first thing first, the components. Um, I use MDF to build the body of the robot because I got my hands on the laser cutter in my university. The robot is made from 5 pieces and I plan and drew everything on AutoCAD. I found these 12 volts DC motors on eBay and they also came with wheels, motor mounts and brackets as well, so it was very convenient. You can find the link on eBay to all these items in the video description below. To drive the motors, I used a L298N motor driver, which is basically just an H bridge with a heat sink, and it's one of the cheapest 12 volt motor driver you can find on the internet. Um, quick tip um, these burn easily if you do not use them properly, so get five of them instead of one. One really nice thing about this motor driver as well is that it has a step down 12 volt to 5 volt output which is really convenient as the other components in the robot use 5 volt. As you might have guessed, in order to know the current state of the robot to drive the motors accordingly, we will need a sensor to get that information. And for that I use the MPU6050 module, which has a gyroscope and an accelerometer on one board. Next, we will need to find a way to send control signal wirelessly to a robot via a controller or an app on a smartphone. So I got a HC05 Bluetooth module on eBay as well to do that task. And of course, the brain of the robot. I am using an Arduino Uno R3. You can find this anywhere online and I'm sure most of you are familiar with it already. Last but not least, to power the whole thing, I'm using a 11.1 volt lithium LiPo battery. Again, the link to buy all of the components on the post on my website, which is in the video description below. Okay, now that we have all the components, let's start wiring them together. I drew this diagram to show you roughly how they are all connected. So the power from the LiPo battery will go to the motor driver, which will pushes out 5 volts for the Arduino, the gyroscope sensor, and the Bluetooth module. The RXTX pins of the Arduino is used for communicating with um, the Bluetooth module using UART. The gyroscope communicates with the Arduino using I2C, which is a communication protocol. So it's connected to the Arduino at the uh, analog 4 and 5 pins, which are the serial clock and the serial data line. Four digital pins of the Arduino is used to control the direction of the two motors and two more digital pins that are PWM enabled are connected to the motor driver. First thing first, as you can see I'm not using the Arduino IDE. The reason for that is because I built this robot for a subject at my university and it was required um, of us not to use the Arduino IDE or any libraries available. And we could only use um, Atmo Studio, which is the IDE made by the company that made the Atmega 328P, the microprocessor on the Arduino Uno. And the datasheet for the microprocessor was my only reference in this case. So my strategy for making the robot was to write functions or blocks of code for individual parts of the robot and test them out first to make sure that they worked before moving on to the next part. So that was what I did. Here you can see me testing out the PWM code to change the speed and direction of the motors. Then testing the UART communication via Bluetooth. Here I'm sending signals from the phone to the Arduino and changing the PWM output. And finally, also the hardest part was getting I2C to work um, with the MPU6050. You can see the angle in degrees being measured by the sensor and displayed on the phone. So now we have every piece of the puzzle, we just need to find a way to put them all together. Um, the method that I use to control the robot is called a PID controller. If you are unfamiliar with what a PID controller is and how it works, I think this link would be very useful. So check it out. Alright, at this point of the process of making the robot, I thought I had everything I needed to put them all together. 
I wrote the code and BAM! Okay, so what went wrong? Um, I didn't mention this earlier, but a year ago I attempted to make the same robot and I failed with the same outcome as well. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Back then I did not know what I was doing and mostly used code sites stole from instructables or stack overflow. Um, but this time it was different. I went through the codes and realized what I did wrong. And what I did wrong was my use of the MPU 62050 sensor. You see I only use the accelerometer on the sensor module. How it works is that it measures the gravitational acceleration g in three directions x, y, and z. When the robot is upright, the z value should read 1g, while the x and y value should be both 0g. When the robot is tilted, the z value should be less than 1g now, and by taking the arc tangent of this x value over the z value, we will get the angle theta that we're looking for. This worked fine when the robot was stationary, however, whenever the robot moves, it creates an acceleration as well. And by inertia, this acceleration affects the accelerometer's readings, and therefore gives us the wrong value for theta. So I had to reprogram the whole thing, I think the use of the gyroscope is the flowchart of the final code. You can see that I read the value from the accelerometer first to calculate the initial angle. This means that every time I turn on the robot, I had to hold it still for a while. And when the robot is moving, I would stop using the accelerometer to measure the angle, and instead I would use the gyroscope, which gives you the change of angle over time, or degrees per second. And integrating that value from the initial angle would give me the correct current angle, whether the robot was moving or not. You can find this flowchart on my website, which is in the video description. And that was it. A few hours of coding and a few more of tuning the PID controller later, my self balancing robot was complete. I know that a lot of people have made similar robots as well and posted videos on YouTube on how to make one of those robots. But the reason why I wanted to make this video was that I wanted to focus more on the details, especially the coding and logic behind such a robot. I think you can learn a lot from making a robot like this in your free time or for a school or a university project. I hope that this video was useful for you somehow. And yeah, if you have any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment down below or go to my website and leave a comment there. Thank you very much for watching.